Now, I will offer the resistance for hip flexion. See what happens. You have to bend your hip. Okay, bend. Bend. Bend more. More. You can bend the knee. Bend more. Bend. 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 More. 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 Can you see here? Okay. Why it happened dorsiflexion? flexion? Okay, so to help hip flexor. So these are the synergistic muscles. So when I am facilitating hip flexors and seeing contraction in dorsiflexor, then this is irradiation. When I am trying to help even dorsiflexors by giving resistance, that is reinforcement. Okay? That means when I am activating hip flexors, bend, bend, no, no, bend, bend, bend up, up, bend, bend this also, this also, up, 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 up. So this is reinforcement. I am reinforcing hip flexors with dorsiflexors. Whichever is weak, I will try to use that particular muscle group to reinforce the other. For example, if my patient has weak dorsiflexion, then I may give resistance in the hip flexors to get more activity of dorsiflexor. Or if my patient has weakness in the hip flexors, I may give <coughs> resistance for the knee flexion so I may get more activity in the hip flexor. So this is reinforcement. I am reinforcing one muscle group by using the other. Okay? So that is irradiation and reinforcement. Any problem? First one, manual resistance. Second one, irradiation and reinforcement. Any doubt? Third one, manual contact. Manual contact means whichever muscles you are trying to facilitate, your hand should be on that particular muscle group. Then the activity of muscles is more. For example, if I am trying to activate the biceps, then my hand should be on the biceps so that this can activate the biceps more. If I am trying to activate wrist flexors, then my hand should be on the wrist flexors to facilitate the contraction more. This is manual contact. Manual contact on the patient body. <coughs> Whichever group you want to facilitate, the hand should be on that particular muscle group. So the question, if you want to facilitate plantar flexors of your patient, then where should be the manual contact? On the calf. On the calf. Okay. Whichever muscle you want to facilitate, the hand should be on that particular muscle. Okay. Same group. Next one, body position and body mechanics. This is we have seen in the posture also. If we have a good body position, then muscular strength or muscular strain is very less. If we are in abnormal position, then it is difficult. For example, can you come? I will show you three types of resisting the patient for the hip flexors. You, tell, you should tell me in which position his body is looking good or his body position is good. Okay? One, you hold here. Okay? And you ask him to bend the hip. Hold there. Yeah, hold there. Ask him to bend. Okay, bend. Resist. Give the resistance. Yes, hold. Bend. Bend. Hold. Bend. Hold. Bend. Okay? This is one position. Okay, now come here. Come here. Keep your hand here. Okay? Like this. In this way. Yes. Now, bend. Hold. Bend. Hold. Bend. Relax. Okay? Which is good? Which position of therapist is good? 
This is good or that is good? This is good. Why? This is good. Why? This is good. This is good. This is good. Why? Why it is safe? Why this is not safe? <laughs> okay, when they are here, they try to use more flexion. Okay, the therapist will be bent to hold it. But when they are here, their posture is good. They can just put their body weight. Okay, most of the time, you don't know because you are not at practice as a physical therapist. But with experience, I am telling when you use extremities in your resistance then by the end of the day you will be very tired as the physical therapist but if you use your body and body mechanics then you don't get tired even if you see 25 patients okay it is very important to understand therapist mechanics are very important for your endurance to see more number of patients so most of the time you should use your body weight to offer the resistance rather than using the hands to offer the resistance. Understanding? Yes. Sir. So here I am using body weight. Yes. Body weight means my mm. body weight I will put. Okay? If I be here it is 60 kg. If I be here it is 40 kg. If I be here it is 20 kg. But if it is here, even I use maximum it will be 20 kg. Okay? So patient body is very important where it is supposed to be. That's why in the exam you will see therapist position. Therapist position is important. If therapist position is wrong, then whole technique will be wrong. Okay, verbal command. If I am talking to <laughs> Okay, this is one command. Bend. Bend. Come on, more. Bend. Bend. <laughs> okay? <laughs> When there is maximal force of contraction for muscle, when there will be maximal contraction for the muscle? Next. When I say slowly or when I say with good voice? Okay? Slowly when you say, you cannot facilitate muscles. If you want to facilitate, it should be, command should be firm. Command should be nice. So your voice is very important when you are talking to your patient. Even in the class, if I am speaking, would it be fine? No. Good? <laughs> Kalas? Okay? So you don't understand anything what I am speaking. So my comments are very important. It should be firm. It should be precise. It should be clear. So your comments to the patient should be clear, precise, with good volume. Okay? So that is the importance of verbal commands. So, when patient is able to understand your commands, they can do better. Vision, the patient should be able to see the vision. The patient should be able to see the movement of the, the, movement of the body. For example, if I am contracting the biceps, okay? if I keep here, Bend, okay, this is one way, and I keep biceps here, bend, which is better, why, same no, side, because you can see here, here you cannot see it, okay, so when you see it, it is better, when patient sees the muscle contraction, then it is better, okay, so we finished manual resistance. We finished the bar. See, we have finished manual resistance. Second, irradiation and reinforcement. Third, manual contact. 
फोर्थ बॉडी पोजिशन फिफ्थ वर्बल कमांड्स विजन ट्रैक्शन एंड अप्रोक्सीमेशन ट्रैक्शन मीन्स टूडे ऑल्सो दैट इज द क्वेश्चन इन द एग्जाम फुल इन द बॉडी सेगमेंट से पार्ट दैट इज ट्रैक्शन इफ यू आर डूइंग बाय थेरापिस्ट देन इट इज मैन्युअल इफ इट इज डूइंग बाय मशीन देन इट इज मैकेनिकल approximation is compression okay compression when you want open kinematic kind of activity then you have to provide traction when you want closed kinematic kind of activity then you have to provide approximation example if i am doing push ups like this okay my joints are approximated or my joints are in traction Approximation. Approximation. So, this is closed kinematic. Okay, wrist, elbow, shoulder, everything is in approximation. <laughs> Requires more stabilization. When I am doing this, here also I am contracting biceps, but here I require traction to move the biceps easily or to move the joint easily the movement. So this is traction and approximation <coughs> stretch how to stretch the muscle or why to stretch the muscle when we stretch the muscle and ask the patient to contract the contraction force is good okay but when you don't stretch the muscle then the contraction force is less there are two points of stretch that is the first is short latency spinal reflex that produces little force and may not be functional significance the second is functional stretch response has a longer latency but produces more powerful and functional contractions so when you stretch the muscle if it is contracting then it is the facilitation for contraction for example you know deep tendon reflexes yes okay keep it like this keep it relax 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 okay why it is moving reflex so the first contraction is reflex stretch okay this is reflex stretch which is not useful okay but if i am stretching and asking you to contract for example i bend and can you make it straight yes bend straight bend straight bend straight this is second part the first part is automatic which is not good not for the functional improvement but the second type you give the resistant and ask the patient to do the contraction that is more useful for the patient for the long run so that is about the stretch timing timing means normal movements when they start they start from proximal to distal or distal to proximal proximal to distal proximal to distal but when you see the movement the contraction starts proximal to distal but movements start from distal to proximal for example if this specs is here okay when i try to reach before my shoulder activated my hands are open already okay my wrist is up my hands are open then i'll go i don't do this movement then i open i'll do this no okay no i'll already open then i do this so it goes from distal to proximal movement goes from distal to proximal but muscle contraction stabilization requires from proximal to distal so when you activate the movement for your patient in the patterns for example i am doing a pattern that is flexion adduction supination dislocation <coughs> finger flexion ulnar deviation okay if this is the pattern then i start from here extension now i do bend your fingers bend your fingers bend your wrist very good 
move this to ulnar deviation, supination, bend more, bend more, bend more, and bend more. So I have done from distal to proximal because normal movements are timing is distal to proximal. So that's why you have to facilitate the movements from distal to proximal if it is open. Okay? But for muscle contraction, muscle strength, if you want to stimulate, then it is proximal to distal. So this is timing. Which muscle has to contract in which part of the movement? Usually it is distal to proximal. Now timing for emphasis means, <coughs> now my patient has weakness in the elbow flexor. My patient has weakness in the elbow flexor. So what I will try to do is, I will try to activate the muscle and I wait till I get the contraction in the elbow flexor. For example, bend your fingers, bend your wrist, bend your elbow, bend your elbow, bend your elbow. So I wait till I get the good muscle contraction of the biceps. So this is called emphasis, timing for emphasis, emphasizing on one particular muscle group till you get the contraction. Okay? Or uh, you don't allow it to move till you get that particular biceps contraction. Okay? So that is the timing for emphasis. So the third one is patterns. This you have already seen the patterns. So that finishes the lecture. Okay, any doubt in any of these things?